Hello and welcome to another Timeless video. Today we're taking a look at the Red Black or Rakdos Evoke deck, also known as Rakdos Scam. Now that we have access to these Evoke elementals in the format, we've got four copies of Grief to take away cards from the opponent's hand, and then we've got four copies of Fury, which shines against creatures as we can divide four damage when it enters. And then the reason this deck is sometimes nicknamed Rakdos Scam is that we can scam our opponents pretty early in the game if we combine these elementals with an effect like Undying Malice or not dead after all, which can then return that creature from the graveyard right away, in this case with a Wicked Roll token, so we can have that enter the battlefield effect twice, taking two cards with a Grief can lead to some early wins, and then of course Fury great against any creature decks as well. Then the main difference with this archetype and the modern variant, of course Fury is banned in modern, but we also have access to Reanimate, which isn't legal in modern yet, so this can help bring back a Troll of Casa Doom pretty early, as we can Swamp Cycle it first, and then it can also be very nice in combination with the elementals after evoking them, so Reanimate adds another dimension to the deck, can also maybe take away a powerful creature from the opponent with Grief, or with our four copies of Thoughtseize, and then use Reanimate to bring it back, so that's also pretty fun. And then we've got some other powerful one-drops here with the Ragavan, which can provide a lot of card advantage if it goes unopposed. We've got Lightning Bolt as removal, playing this over Fatal Push just to have more red cards to pitch to Fury. And then a Croxa can be exiled to both Fury and Grief, so it's quite flexible there, but also good to cast and later escape as we've got a lot of cards ending up in the graveyard to help there. And then a Fable of the Mirror Breaker can give us extra mana thanks to the Shaman token, can kind of smooth out our draws with Chapter 2. And finally, the Reflection of Kiki Jiki is also excellent with the Evoke Elementals, as we can re-trigger their Enter the Battlefield abilities. And then a Shield Root can maybe gain us some extra life, offset the life loss from Reanimate, and also good in combination with Chapter 2 from Fable. Not playing any Bowmasters, since we now have Fury to take care of smaller creatures, so it hasn't been super necessary, but of course still a powerful option in this archetype as well. And then the mana base has a couple fetch lanes, which can get Blood Crypt or Basics or, or one of Theater, which we can also get with the Swamp Cycling Troll, which is why we have a relatively low land count. And then a couple Basics, and then Abandoned Mire can also maybe be channeled to get back a creature in the late game. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, we have a powerful hand against creature decks with Fury... Red cards to pitch to it and Undying Malice. If we want to grief with Malice, of course we won't be able to bring it back. Yeah, I think we give it a try. Don't have a super proactive turn one play. Unless we want to just evoke or grief pitching Malice. But we're just hoping to face a more creature dense deck. And if we draw a black spell, then we can set up the grief plus Malice play. Opponent has a Ragavan. It's a good target for Fury. And now a Bolt as well. Yeah, still like the Fury play. We'll pitch one Fable. Need to make sure to go full control. And bring back our Fury. Could have potentially waited for the opponent to commit another creature to the board, but we also don't want Ragavan to get out of hand. Now if they have their own Fury, they can answer this pretty easily, but at least it's out of range from Fatal Push or Lightning Bolt. And opponent's got their own Fury, that's too bad. So yeah, they get to return the favor, maybe with their own Undying Malice. In which case I could have responded with a Bolt on the Fury before they could resolve the Undying Malice, but it's just going to be a death right. Seems worth taking out. And not that after all. So yeah, I can evoke grief, but I don't think it's quite worth it here. Maybe if I find another black card. And then we would love to play Fable. Opponent's got a green splash. 
probably just for death rites, and then now their own fable. Ragvan, maybe a little late to the party. Can still just cast it instead of dashing, and then we have not dead after all to sort of protect it. Don't know if I want to block and cast not dead after all. Probably not. Thoughtseize kind of forces the issue here. But uh, I'll just let it resolve. So yeah, Grief is losing value now that our opponent's empty-handed, but our opponent still takes it, so they might have some powerful 4 or 5 drops in hand. And reanimate our Grief makes sense. Could have gone for Fury as well. And takes our 1 mana spell. Alright, Shaman stays back. So if Ragavan attacks, opponent's trading for the Shaman, presumably. Then they get Reflection, which is quite powerful with Grief. But I can get Fable going in the meantime. So I guess I'm not really incentivized to trade away Ragavan right now. If we maybe find a Fury, we can start clearing some of the opponent's creatures. Reanimate for Fury would do it too. So we have out. But our opponent's slightly ahead here. A Lightning Bolt's not bad either. So we can keep the Bolts. And then probably attack with both creatures. Forcing some trades. And then Bolt can maybe take care of whatever's left. So now I probably wait for the opponent to use Reflection on the Grief. And then we can Bolt it in response. I'll take three for now. Opponent's also at six, so double bolt would be lethal. So I don't think I'm in a hurry to cast the bolt right now, since we're just going to wait for the opponent to tap the reflection here in our draw step, maybe. Another fable's fine. So I'll just go to attackers. Let's go to Bowmasters, so that can trade. And that'll make my second chapter worse, but that's alright. Reflection plus Bowmaster is also pretty good. So it's still anyone's game. And reanimate the draw. That's exciting. So, looking at Fury. And, uh, don't think there's a huge difference between my graveyard and the opponent's. I prefer this art. I guess if they have something like a Cling to Dust, it's better to target the opponent's graveyard, so we have more stuff in here for maybe a Croxa. I guess Croxa in general, a reason to target the opponent's graveyard. So they're gonna deal one damage, that's fine. And we're gonna decimate the opponent's board here. Copy Fury. And attack for the win. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with uh, Promising Hands, missing one of our Evoke Elementals perhaps to completely go off, but can be too sad with Ragavan and then Lightning Bolt to maybe clear a path for it. If our opponents get their own Elemental, we have Reanimate to maybe get it back. Right, it's going to be Aggro with Swiss Spear. So in that case, do we just keep a Bolt or maybe Bolt right now, and then next turn maybe Dash Ragavan? If I play Ragavan, it's likely just getting removed. So, I think it's reasonable to keep up Lightning Bolts instead of bolting the Swiss Spear right now, in case a scarier creature shows up. Eidolon of the Great Ravel comes to mind. But, uh, 
Could also get punished if her opponent has lots of cheap prowess enablers. And we're forced to bolt a Swiss Spear anyway. So I'll take one. Opponent's gonna play with fire. Alright, I think we bolt now, although could still get punished by a Monstrous Rage, I suppose. And then a Skewer of the Critics. Okay. So, is it time to dash Ragavan? Could then reanimate the Swiss Spear. Probably don't want to reanimate Troll in this matchup, since it's going to cost me a lot of life. Could also play Ragavan, keep up Undying Malice. And then if they don't make me Undying Malice, we can just Swamp Cycle Troll to set up Fable. Don't hate that idea. Because yeah, Dashing Ragavan has a reasonable success rate against Modern Reds, since they have so many one-drops we could hit. But it's also nice to kind of get it in play, so we don't have to keep paying the dash cost. So this might bait out another removal spell, otherwise we're pretty happy with this exchange. Uh, and the Skewer the Critics. So our opponent's down to one card in hand. And I can reanimate Ragavan, which is not too painful. And probably want to Swamp Cycle the Troll now too. And then if I get an untapped land, we can keep up another not dead after all. Okay, so don't hit my spots. Double Fable is going to provide a lot of value. But if our opponent just draws burn spells for the rest of the game, they can still outrace us. And we found Shock. Don't know if I actually want to cast it, since I could play Fable and keep up Not Dead. How does the math work out here? I mean, we're definitely doing this. At this point, they're maybe pointing burn spells at our face instead of at Ragavan. So it could be reasonable to just Shock here, put them to 13. Sure. And then we can discard not that after all. Alright, opponent is gonna skew Ragavan. So the other play might have worked out slightly better. Do we want to cast grief or evoke it with not dead after all? Could also discard double fable, hope to find a black card, so I can evoke and not dead. But with the extra mana we can also just cast it. So I think I get rid of one fable since I probably don't have time to cast both. And we'll see what we find. Alright, so I'm just gonna attack. And then I think cast a grief. Although I suppose with Fable I can get rid of some cards that I won't necessarily need in the future. And then I can still evoke a grief pitching Thoughtseize. Opponent had a land in hand anyway. And then next turn, likely discard Grief to Chapter 2. And Raptor is a good one. Can block our Shaman tokens profitably. And hits a Lightning Bolt going face. Discard both cards. At this point a Fury would be nice. Shield Roots. Croxa, there's a few, and there's Croxa, so can cast it, attack, and then should be able to escape it as well. And then at 5 life we should be relatively safe. Put 
opponents at three. They might have their own uh, Titan now with Flage, which can also be escaped and gain them some life back. So yeah, I guess if they drew it, they could take out Reflection, gain three, and then jump Croxa to survive. Okay, so we can just attack all out. Could also keep Reflection to copy Reflection. That's kind of a neat mana sink. But yeah, if I attack all out with the Croxa trigger, that should be good enough, unless they maybe have a Lightning Helix to gain life. Then they could jump, gain three up to six, but then I guess with the trigger they would still take at least seven. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not amazing, but we can get Blood Crypt. And then Troll plus Reanimate is an option. We have Lightning Bolt for removal. So we can go in a few different directions. Not the best against combo since we don't have any discard spells. But I'll try it. Ooh, a Leyline of Sanctity. So we are up against Show and Tell combo and they have the Leyline. So I guess it's a good thing we didn't have any discard spells. But uh, yeah, that's still a problem if our opponent can assemble their combo pieces in time. So the plan now is cycle troll and then next turn reanimate it to apply some pressure. Also can lightning bolt the opponent because of leyline. So these are still kind of dead cards. So don't love my chances here. Yeah, leyline's very effective against our deck if you have it in your opener. So what are we hoping for? Ragavan would have been one of our better creatures since it can apply pressure and generate mana. Fury also doesn't do much since their opponent's not playing any creatures. Another troll. Okay, so we'll uh, just reanimate it here. Or at least try to. They might have a spell pierce, they don't. So this is a three turn clock. Can our opponent combo before then? They might have kept their hand based on the strength of Leyline in your opener. That's the hope. But we could just die right now. Another brainstorm with fetch line to shuffle. Okay, so they're maybe not going for it right now at least. I can fetch Theater, or I can cycle another Troll. Opponent's gonna assemble, so that can maybe tutor up whatever piece they need. And they made a decision pretty swiftly, so yeah, I don't have high hopes here. So what's the best I can top deck from here? Yeah, there's not that much that's exciting. Another reanimate for Troll is probably still too slow. And again, with Leyline, that limits our options. I'll go for a theater, can maybe have a look here, but yeah, there's just not much we can hope for that would be effective. Maybe a dashed Ragavan finding something from the opponent that could help. Another Undying Malice, so I'll just hit for six. Play Fable and then Hope they can combo, but it seems pretty likely here. If they show and tell, I can put in a troll. Ah, there's a show and tell. Maybe digging for shield root and putting that in play could have prevented the opponent from drawing too many cards with omniscience on the battlefield. So that's probably our best card to find in that spot. But yeah, if they have a demonic tutor, they can just find like an Atraxa, which will likely find whatever else they need. Yep, yeah, so show and tell if they start with Leyline is a pretty tough matchup. Without Leyline or deck has a decent amount of disruption to strip away their combo pieces. So I'm not sure what the matchup percentages are like exactly, but I think it would still favor the Rakdos deck in general. And double Atraxa. 
So they're looking for a Masterminds acquisition, which can then get Approach of the Second Sun, and then Atraxa can find Approach and they win the game on the spot. But yeah, with Omniscience it's usually not too difficult to figure out a way to win. Sanctuary get back Demonic Tutor, can maybe draw into it. We do have an interesting play available here should the game somehow progress, which is to attack with all our creatures, and then use Lightning Bolt on our own troll to prevent Atraxa from gaining 7 life, since we cannot bolt their face anymore. Although in this case that might still leave us a little bit short. Their opponent's digging, and it's just a matter of time here until they win the game, assemble. So they've seen most of their deck by now. And there's the acquisition, gets approach, cast approach, Atraxa, and approach again. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Decent hands, a lot of avenues here, whether we want to reanimate Grief or a Troll. Leading with Thoughtseize is also reasonable. And this might be another mirror match. So if they take the Grief, we can just reanimate it. Takes reanimate, makes sense. So then now I think I just uh, Thoughtseize. And then we can still decide to evoke Grief if needed. Opponent's got another Thoughtseize and then double Ragavan. So I could just take a Ragavan and then Grief take another Ragavan. So no one gets to have any fun. Otherwise a dashed Ragavan is one way they can kind of snowball an advantage pretty quickly. So yeah, that doesn't leave us in a great spot. So maybe the answer is don't worry about Ragavan. And instead just take the Thoughtseize, let them dash Ragavan and take it from there. But yeah, if they hit a powerful one drop, we could be in trouble. It's just a fable. I'll land off the top. So now we're probably getting a theater with our fetch land. And I don't think I grief anything here. I'll just go for a slow approach. Keep troll in hand still, because it can maybe be used with grief, so not in a hurry to cycle it. And they hit a land, so it could have been worse. And our opponent missed their land drop, it seems. Although they still have Bowmasters at the ready. And another Fable. Again, not the best in the face of Bowmasters, but I think it's still a nice 2 for 1. And seems like this is gonna grind to a halt pretty soon. Could have also gotten a swamp if we're worried about Blood Moon, but I don't think that's likely. So now if they dash Ragavan, I could trade if I want to. Although I wouldn't be surprised if they have some removal in hand. But when playing the Bowmasters using both treasure tokens, okay. So this might be a not that after all type of effect in hand, wanting to trade with a shaman. So I think I take it. And then maybe next turn hard cast grief. Alright, they just had another bowmasters, also makes sense. So definitely not gonna draw here, and Fury was quite a draw. Okay, so I think step one just cast grief, see what they're working with, and then step two pitch fury. Although I could also attack and then cast Fury. Maybe that's even better. Yeah, just keep hard casting my stuff instead of trying to pitch them. That'll be a pretty clean answer to everything in play. While also making a blocker for Ragavan.
Their opponent had a scarier opening hand, I would argue, but the fact that they've been stuck on two kind of let us get to a point where we can hard cast our spells instead of having to pitch them. And now we might be in the driver's seat. But uh, yeah, it only takes an opposing pitch elemental plus one of those undying effects and all of a sudden our opponent can flip the script. Which was maybe an argument for pitching Reef last turn. But don't hate the idea of maybe casting it and then eventually with the reflection we can also start copying it. Is our opponent just casting Ragavan. And reanimating a Bowmasters. That's fine. So we've got a good attack with Fury. And then could Cycle Troll get a land just to hit our land drop and then still cast the Grief? Maybe after attacking? Don't have quite enough in Graveyard for Croxa to escape. But we'll get there soon enough. And they had more Ragavans and Fable. Okay, so... Just take the Fable here. And then if they don't have an answer to Reflection, that plus Fury can easily take over. And then... What does this attack imply? Maybe another Bowmasters. Definitely don't want to take 3 and die to a Lightning Bolt. But I should be fine to just block Bowmasters. Opponent hits our own Ragavan. So yeah, our opponent's been kind of Ragavan flooded this game. And yeah, if you remember at the beginning of the game we had the option of maybe taking the Ragavans, but that would have cost a lot of resources and probably wouldn't have worked out quite as well. So our opponent still has one unknown in hand. So activating Reflection and having our creature removed in response could potentially turn out poorly. So instead, I think I like Croxa and then uh, take it from there. Is going to discard Ragavan, most likely. And then I can still escape Croxa. Maybe get our last card. That opponent did have a Lightning Bolt. So now Croxa will deal 3 damage instead. And now if I attack all out, our opponent's still dead. Otherwise, with the treasure, we could have used Reflection plus Grief in the opponent's draw step. But it wouldn't be necessary. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Halur's deck. And we've got a decent hand. Can uh, evoke Fury for up against Aggro, and this seems to be the case. The red-white energy deck. Step one might still be to cast Ragavan, and then with Fury we can clear a path next turn. Could also have a look with Thoughtseize, maybe take like a Raptor, which can be a nice two for one. Especially with a guide. But I kind of still like the Ragavan plan, especially if they don't have removal for it. And then wait on Fury. Another guide is acceptable. And they did have a discharge, sadly. So now they could grow a guide if they spend three energy. All right, so they've got a 3-4 now. And not that after all was a perfect top deck. So, Fury pitching... I want to say Lightning Bolt over Croxa, since we're getting somewhat close to escaping it. Especially with Troll getting an extra land. And... Uh, not that after all Fury, deal with both creatures, have a 4-4 double strike on the battlefield, and then I'll still be able to Thoughtseize. 
and a static prison. Probably the pick over Raptor, even though Raptor is a nice two for one. I guess they're sort of low on energy now, so the prison's only gonna keep our Fury exiled for a couple turns, maybe. So I could be convinced to take Raptor actually. The next turn, opponent's prison's Fury or puts Lurus in hand. Lightning bolts could also answer Lurus if we keep that over Croxa. Maybe that's still safer. And then just take the Raptor for now. And I'm probably okay to get Swamp since our life total could matter in this matchup. Go full control. Fury. Pitch Croxa. Sadly gets exiled, so can't escape it. Okay, so as the dust settles, we're going to be cycling Troll for Theater, having Bolt as an answer for Lurus. And then after a couple turns, we'll get our Fury back. Bone right, Prison's Fury. And the Grief is an option, but I think we're just trying to cast it now. So troll for theater, play theater. Could be okay with a land on top, but might find something better. Reanimate, that counts. Can bring back a troll at the very least. Lurus goes to hand. And now it's maybe vulnerable to grief as well. So I have the option of grief pitching reanimate to take Lurus and then hope that the fury can get there. Although with fury coming back, I mean, what's our opponent's plan? Play Lurus, get back a guide of souls or with a land amped raptor. I guess the raptor makes it easier to keep the prison on the battlefield. Otherwise we might be able to get our fury back before it's too late. So definitely an interesting spot. Allure is also kind of a combo with Static Prison in a way. So maybe I should just play it safe and take the Lurus before things get out of hand. Because if I get back Troll and they, let's say, have another Static Prison... I mean, I would still have Lightning Bolt for Lurus. Yeah, I'll just reanimate Troll here. Let's not overthink it. Their opponent's out of energy, and next turn they might have to sacrifice the prison. That yeah, opponent's gonna sack it now, giving us back Fury, makes sense. So it cannot take out Lurus later. Although interestingly, they did have Ether Hub. So now they can go Lurus into Raptor. Or maybe get back prison. Maybe that was their plan all along. That yeah, just goes for a Guide of Souls. So let's bolt Lurus while we can. And Croxa's not a bad one here. Get their last card. Can uh, maybe attack first, giving them less information. Opponent takes it, so if we had another bolt, this would be lethal. If they have a land in hand, they're still dead. And looks like they did. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a uh, decent hand. Can maybe set up the grief scam with not that after all. So, step one. Evo grief, pitching not that after all. Go full control here for this to work. Target our opponents. And then before casting this, I want to check out their hand. That opponent's going to brainstorm to maybe hide their more powerful cards. Fair enough. So that's a very nice use of brainstorm to protect against discard effects. So their opponent's 
probably a show and tell combo deck here with omniscience. So dig through time is scary. Snapcaster Mage can get back a brainstorm. Bolt is an answer to grief. Yeah, when in doubt, taking Snapcaster is not a bad idea. So we could go for Snapcaster and then take the Bolt as well. Although then they're going to be getting close to delving this dig through time. But maybe that's okay. Because we can still Thought Seize next turn to maybe take the dig. So we now have a, a little bit of pressure. And hopefully our opponent doesn't have a clean answer to the grief. Now reanimate's not bad either. Could reanimate Snapcaster Mage. Although I guess I would then be getting back like a Brainstorm or a Lightning Bolt. Start by attacking. Okay. So our opponent might be trying to brainstorm and then fetch to shuffle. So if I start with Thought Seize, we maybe force them to pull the trigger on that first. They of course don't have to sacrifice a fetch land if they just want to put one card on top of their deck and then maybe shuffle the other one away afterwards. So it's still possible they have a show and tell in circulation, which is maybe a reason to take omniscience. Although now, if they cast a show and tell and put omniscience in play, they're going to be empty handed. So I think taking dig through time either way makes sense. And probably no reason to reanimate Snapcaster just for a 2 1. But maybe next turn we can make a more fun play where we get back Thoughtseize. Right, so our opponent hasn't shuffled. So they have one desirable card in hand, most likely. Yeah, I think we're on the uh, reanimate Snapcaster plan instead of Fable. Since they might just be a card away from comboing off otherwise. If there was a second Snapcaster in the graveyard, we could have maybe Daisy Chained double Snapcaster into Thoughtseize. But yeah, the Snapcaster Thoughtseize is good enough here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Two elementals we can evoke, and we have Reanimate to bring back Grief. Still sort of tempted to Haragavan on one. And then next turn, maybe set up the Grief play. Could also cycle troll reanimate it, so we have options. Yeah, opponent is just going to push Ragavan and draw another Fury. So reanimate Grief or again troll cycled bring back troll. I think I prefer the troll play since it also develops our mana. I think I'm fine with the theater, even though we could draw Fable of the Mirror Breaker. That point's gonna grief us. Takes a fury. And they have a undying effect here. Not that after all. And takes Fury again. Find another reanimate. Not bad. So hit with a troll. And then we probably just bring back Fury to take care of the grief. Could have played theater first in case we milled something even better. Not that after all can pitch to a grief, although at this point a land is probably better. Opponent passes, draw not that after all.
And now Bolt Fury, so we could try and save the Fury here. And that's good enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's pretty reactive with double bolts, but uh, yeah, we can maybe go on the beatdown plan with Ragavan if we can clear a path for it. Now reanimate, also an option. So step one is going to be Grief pitching Kroxa. And then we can decide if we want to reanimate Grief or just play Ragavan. Opponent on the Boros Energy deck, which has been taking the format by storm. So, yeah, all these cards can generate some sort of card advantage. Double amulets, also kind of nice in multiples. And they already have double ether hub. So I'm tempted to take the amulets. Although for right now they also don't have an answer to Ragavan. So I could get that going. And then Lightning Bolt can answer the Goblin Shaman token. Right, they drew an Amped Raptor, that's a good one. Great blocker for Ragavan, and they found a Guide of Souls off of it, so now they have two blockers all of a sudden. Could still bolt both of them, but uh, yeah, we will be out of answers. Could also bolt the Raptor, and then reanimate it to maybe hit something sweet. Although our deck has way more cards that are not going to be cast off of the Amped Raptor. So this might just be a double bolt situation. So yeah, needing two bolts to answer one card, basically. That's not how you win games. Right, and then I could still reanimate... Grief here to take either one of these. And at this point, given all the extra energy, I think Amulet is scarier than Fable. So our opponent can play Fable, have a blocker for Ragavan. And we're in top deck mode. Although reanimate's not bad, so we can force the trade and then just reanimate back Ragavan versus get back a Raptor and then hope to hit something cheap off of it. But with all the Evoke Elementals being too expensive, I think that's probably not the way to go. And this way we can still keep up the pressure. They're likely to find more blockers for Ragavan, but we'll see. Static Prison answers it. And our own Fable the draw. And now a Galvanic Discharge. So yeah, so Dust Settles, our opponent's got a nice energy storage, and then now a Reflection of Kiki Jiki. We are probably just going to discard here instead of cycling it. And find a Grief, which I can cast after attacking. Boat on trades. They might just have a land in hand. Yep. Okay, still have a 3-2 Menace. And our opponent will have to keep paying energy to the prison. Troll gets theater, can play it now. And I'll keep a Ragavan on top since we can dash it. And that reflection plus grief is pretty nice, can even activate it in the opponent's draw step 
to maybe take away creatures or sorcery speed removal. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. A few options on turn one, including grief, a reanimate grief. Could start with Thoughtseize. And then maybe Swamp Cycle Troll and reanimate it for additional pressure. Step one, I think, is Thoughtseize. And see what they're working with. All right, it's a show and tell combo deck. So this is the key card that they want to try and cast. So could just take their thought sees. So they can disrupt my reanimates. Could also do the grief now with troll and then next turn reanimate grief to take another card. Although just a grief for pressure is not that much. So maybe reanimating Troll still the way to go. In which case, I mean, we're leaving them with all the combo pieces, which is also not great. I think I still like taking the Thoughtseize for now. And then we'll just pass, and then next turn we can reconsider our options. Put in place the Hedge Maze. And if we draw a black card, I can still maybe reanimate Troll while using Grief. And draw a Swamp instead. Yeah, so next turn our opponent gets to assemble the team and then turn after. They can show and tell and potentially win the game. I still like just putting a troll in play for some pressure. But then I may not be able to cast or evoke grief before it's too late. Right, we'll see what happens. They could Dark Ritual show and tell right now if they drew something powerful. Right, it's just going to be assemble the team to set up for next turn. So yeah, hopefully draw something to combo with a Grief. Thoughtseize I guess also works, can just cast that one. And then opponent had the omniscience to go with show and tell. So next turn opponent can Dark Ritual. They're getting somewhat close to casting a dig through time as well. But yeah, I think show and tell still the pick over omniscience. Since omniscience doesn't really do much by itself. And then another Thought Seize. Next turn we just cast Grief. I guess a Thought Seize is a fine follow-up. And hope they didn't top deck another show and tell pretty much. Ritual assemble. So if assemble now finds another show and tell, we're in trouble. Because then it can cast a free dig through time. They probably didn't find a show and tell since they didn't go for it right away. And I'll just bolt now to use up my mana. Attack. And cast Grief. So our opponent found a Leyline of Sanctity and another Assemble. Those aren't good enough and our opponent concedes. Close one here against Show Tell. They definitely had a window to combo. Alright, so we got to see this Rakdos Evoke deck in action. And it's now by far the most popular deck in Timeless. So you definitely need to be prepared for this matchup and have answers or have a game plan to maybe beat it. As we saw with Show and Tell main decking Leyline of Sanctity. That's potentially one approach. I've also noticed the Red-White Energy deck surging in popularity. And seems to have pretty high win rates as well. So possible that the deck has enough 2 for 1s to kind of outgrind the Rakdos deck in a mid to late game situation, although so far haven't been super impressed, but time will tell if that red wine deck will stick around or not. But yeah, for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.